The remarkable thing about studying evolution is that it changes the way that you think about the people around you. We didn't become human all at once. We became human gradually. It was a process that took hundreds of thousands of years. Many of those hundreds of thousands of years are represented here on Mount Carmel. Right here across the wadi are four sites, including Taboon Cave, which has deposits that date to 400, 500,000 years ago, right up into the Middle Paleolithic, less than 50,000 years ago. You've got School Cave, which has burials that are probably the oldest graves in the world that represent what look like modern humans. They're 100,000 to 120,000 years old, and they're here in the Levant on the edges of the African continent. This spot might represent the first place where we have evidence of them anywhere outside of Africa. Taboon has a burial in it that is a Neanderthal. It might be a little younger than the school burials. It might be a little older. When Dorothy Garrett excavated the site, the stratigraphy involved with this burial were, were less than clear. And although we've tried to straighten it out over the years, it's still uncertain exactly where this lies relative to the burials at school. But nevertheless, we're representing two biologically very different groups of people here. Early modern humans, Neanderthals. When Ted McCown and, and Sir Arthur Keith interpreted the skeletons from these sites, they found that the features on them were mixed between the samples. They couldn't make sense of it. They suggested that this was a population in the throes of evolutionary change. When we look at the archaeology, look at the archaeology associated with the school burials, associated with Taboon, associated with Kafsa Cave, which is nearby, and Amud Cave, which is up near the Sea of Galilee. Look at all those people who lived here in the area of the Levant between 120,000 and 60,000 years ago. They're using similar technologies. This is a population that really does represent a crossroads of different biological populations and of a common archaeological tradition. When you look around this place now, and you see the different groups of people that are represented here, Arabs, Jews, Christians, Druze, people that are culturally very different, biologically, in many respects, very similar, they represent a diversity of lifestyles and cultures that have different histories. When you look at this place 100,000 years ago, 80,000, 60,000 years ago, you realize that you're looking at a biological population that has had enormous transitions that involves the flows of genes and peoples out of Africa, from other parts of West Asia, maybe even from Europe. And yet culturally, they're coming back to do the same things. This place, this landscape, the raw materials available, the animals available, this place has traditions that are growing up here that are being retained over tens of thousands of years. When you think that anthropologists have always struggled with the idea of what makes us human, understand that no matter what the biology of the people were across this wadi, those people were behaving in fundamentally the same way. Were they fully modern? Were they very much like us? I think they talked. I think that they had cultures. They loved each other. They raised their children. And yet, when you go forward in time and you see the enormous changes that are wrought right here in this place, when we go forward to El Wad, where we have Natufian people, these are high density, high intensity collectors, hunters, and gatherers who are living just before the domestication of plants and animals in this part of the world. When you look at those people living in settlements, living in a sedentary lifestyle, not moving around nearly as much as the Neanderthals and modern humans before them, you realize that there really have been substantial changes. Many of those changes that happened within the last 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 years were cultural changes but they impacted biology. Human culture and biology have been an interacting system ever since humans became cultural beings. When we see that here, the earliest layers at Taboon, the Ashula-Yubrudian technology that 
is really different from the later Middle Paleolithic technologies. That lower Paleolithic, it's got hand axes, it has simple flake, cool, flake tools. When you go up to the Mousterian and you have scraper-based tools, you have the appearance of blades, you have the appearance of personal ornamentation, including these pierced shells. You think of what's going on there, people really were changing. You also realize the difficulty of working out exactly what those changes involved. That's the excitement of studying human evolution. We take archaeologists who are trying to understand the cultural traditions and how they change over time, we are trying to understand what causes stability of archaeological traditions and what causes correlations of material culture with different places and with different peoples. You take biologists who are trying to understand the way that the skeleton reflects biological identity, the relationships between different populations, and their adaptations to the place where they're living. And now you take geneticists who are showing that in this part of the world, sometime around 100,000 years ago, there's a mixture of populations where modern humans are taking up genes from Neanderthals, where these populations are interacting with each other. It's tremendously exciting. And looking here at Mount Carmel and thinking, this is just a local place. Everything that happened here was just because of the way that people were trying to get by in this landscape. But because it has preserved this evidence, it has such global importance. It represents almost uniquely a time period that was critical in our evolutionary history a time period that we're grappling to understand. One of the latest time periods at which all of us everywhere in the world share aspects of a common heritage. That's evolution. And once you wrap your head around that, it's difficult to look at people the same way.